So in addition to doing object level operations, like we've looked at so far, you can also access the component geometry of a dynamic mesh. So what I mean by that is the faces, the vertices, normals, and vertex colors are all accessible and actionable using geometry scripting. So I've got a basic editor utility widget here. There's a button. And the event associated with that button is going to get the selection from the content browser. We're going to cast it to a static mesh. We'll create a dynamic mesh and then create a reference to that here in our variables. And then once everything is done, we're going to do a bunch more things on, on the other side of that. There's a little save operation here where we're going to take that dynamic mesh that we created up here and we're going to save it to a new static mesh at this path. We're going to go ahead and return all of the meshes that we've generated, all the dynamic meshes that we've generated to the dynamic mesh pool for cleanup. And then we'll go ahead and save our static mesh. If any of this is unclear, please go back and review the previous videos on geometry scripting in this course. So what I'm going to do to demonstrate how to access this data is I'm going to have a selected object, in this case a sphere in the content browser, and I'm going to sample all of the triangles on the surface of the sphere. I'm going to get the normal vector, which is a perpendicular vector to that triangle, and then the position of the triangle, and I am going to create a little arrow here and stick it on the surface so that it's perpendicular to whichever triangle I am sampling. And then we'll save that off as a static mesh. So once we've established that we have a static mesh selected in the content browser, we'll go ahead and create a dynamic mesh. We need to copy the static mesh to the dynamic mesh so that we can evaluate it. So we can do that very easily. With copy statics, we're gonna use copy mesh from static mesh. We'll go ahead and plug our static mesh in. Once we've got the dynamic mesh, we want to iterate over all of the faces. So we need to know how many there are. We can use this getNum triangle IDs function. It's going to return back an integer. Integer is a whole number. I'm going to pull off from success and type in for loop. A for loop is similar to a for each loop, except a for loop is going to just repeat a series of steps a certain number of times. The for each loop is going to expect to be fed an array and it's going to iterate over everything in that array. An array again is just a list. So in this case, we're just going to repeat whatever I connect to my loop body pin here for whatever my, my range is. So we start off at zero and then as soon as my counter hits whatever this value is, we are done with our for loop and the completed pin will fire. So every time we go through, we add one to our counter. So Initially, our value is going to be zero, and at the end, it's going to be, you know, whatever this is, minus one. All right, there's a peculiarity about the triangle IDs in Unreal where you can have gaps. So if you're dealing with a piece of geometry in Maya and it has 100 polygons on it, if you delete one, all the polygons are going to be renumbered. There will be no gaps. That's not the case here. So we need to, to confirm that our triangle ID is valid with is valid triangle ID. So we want to pipe in the current triangle ID on our dynamic mesh, and it's going to return a Boolean. Whenever you see this red pin, that's going to be true, false. So we'll pull off from loop body and type branch. And into the branch, we will feed our Boolean. So if it's valid, true will fire. And if it's false or not valid, false will fire. So once we've confirmed that we have a valid triangle ID, I'm going to go ahead and grab another reference to my dynamic mesh, as opposed to just continuing this blue line. This will just keep it a little more organized. And what I want to do is I want to get the triangle normal. So get triangle normals, pull off from true, feed it the correct ID. And it's going to give us three normal vectors. Vector is just a, a three component data. These are all floats or decimal point numbers. I don't need to access each one individually, so I'm perfectly happy to leave them here as vectors. The yellow pin here means it's a vector, but I need to get the average of these. Fortunately, there is a node called get vector array average. get vector array average, and it's going to be looking for a vector array. So I can just make an array. 
The array by default doesn't know what kind of data it's going to hold, but as soon as you plug something in, it will say, ah, I am a vector array. We'll add a couple more pins, plug these vectors in, and then we can plug the array into the get vector array average node. And so now we have an average normal for our triangle. The next thing that we want to do is we want to get the position. Get triangle positions. We will give it the triangle ID. And it's going to be the exact same thing. We're going to get the position for each vertex, which again is a vector, the XYZ position. You just copy these. And this will give us the center of our triangle, the average position of all of the verts. So once we have this data, we have pretty much what we need in order to spawn our little arrows. So I'm going to go back to the dynamic mesh pool. I'm going to request a new mesh. Scoot this stuff out of the way. And we're going to do the same copy static mesh operation. And I'm just going to select it in the content browser and I can push this little arrow with a circle on it. It will be assigned. So now we have one of these in our dynamic mesh land. I can go ahead and grab our original dynamic mesh and type in append mesh. We'll pull off of the success pin connected to the append mesh. And then the dynamic mesh pin here is going to be our little arrow. I'm going to plug that into the append mesh. So the last piece we need to feed in here is our append transform. So I'm going to create a transform node using make transform. I've got my location and I need to convert this vector into a rotator. So I'm just going to type make rotator and you can see there's some options here. The one that we want is make rotator from Z. You can experiment with some of the other ones to see what the different behaviors are if you like. And we'll leave scale at one, one, one all the way across. Compile and save. Okay, so that's going to be all that we need to do per triangle, which means we, at the end of this, are ready to save our new mesh off. So I'm going to slide this over here. Our completed pin will fire, and we are ready to save the dynamic mesh. We'll put it here in temp mesh. It should show up right there. We will return all of the dynamic meshes that we created, and then we'll go ahead and save the new asset. Now there's a, a peculiarity here. There is a limit to the number of dynamic meshes that you can generate before you start returning them. And I believe it is a thousand. So this piece of geometry here has 3000 faces. So we'll run into an, an error there, but there's another more challenging problem, which is that something in this operation triggers an iteration warning where if a blueprint does something a million times, Unreal thinks perhaps there's a problem, an infinite loop or, or some other kind of issue, and it will terminate the process. So even though this only has 3000 faces, there's something in here that is running afoul of that limit. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just run this 500 times. So I'm going to type less than we will enter 500 here. I'm going to create a branch. And do that. I could also just put 500 here, but I don't really want this to be as hard coded. I'd prefer to be able to iterate over all the geometry. So I'm actually going to simplify this in a minute, but I just want to kind of confirm this is all going to work as expected. So it will select our static mesh. We will run the utility widget. And there you go. So it looks pretty cool. And as I said, you know, we're, we're limited to 500 triangles here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I think this is the same thing. And I'm just going to do a quick simplify on it. So we'll go to modeling, mesh, simplify. 50%, I think we'll take it to 1500. And I'll do that actually one more time. Go ahead and save it. So now we have 768, so we should be good to go. I can, I can get rid of this, really all of it. 
we'll compile. And let's run this one more time. All right, well, it didn't like that, but it's actually an opportunity here to show you the kind of error that you can expect to see. So we've got a runaway loop detected over a million iterations, and yeah, so it canceled that. So somehow it still kind of felt uncomfortable with 768, but it was okay with 500. So, okay, and just for the record, if you want, if you go to the project settings and type in iterations, you'll get this limit here. Definitely something you want to be mindful of modifying. If you've got engineers on your team, ask them first. You could definitely have some, you could make some, uh, some real problems. But anyway, that is a, that's an option if your computer can handle it. This computer probably can't. It seems like it's having some issues. But anyway, so that is hopefully a, a relatively useful example of how you can access the, the normals and the locations of the triangles and uh, do stuff with them. There's going to be, like I'm going to talk about Fracture here at some point, and there'll be an another opportunity to get into one more thing that you can do with this, which is pretty cool, where you can actually bake ambient occlusion, and then you can evaluate vertex colors to find occluded faces and delete them. So you can lighten up your geometry if you're using like a nanite kind of situation. So anyway, we'll talk about that probably in a couple of videos, but uh, we're, we're going to move on to some other things here in the next few videos. So stick around. It's going to be cool.